Have you ever wondered what it would be like to eat and train like a demon slayer for 24 hours? Today I answer that question as we try to become like the god of festivals, Tengen Uzui. I'm gonna put these down now because this is not safe. I love demon slayer. I even got a new demon slayer inspired tattoo just for this video. Why do I like demon slayer? I don't know, anything with sisters and brothers, it just, it just warms my heart. Plus you have vampire Michael Jackson, like you can't go wrong. One of my favorite characters is the god of festival, Tengen. So today I'm gonna be eating like him all day and training like him, which kind of worries me a little bit. I'm gonna wash my rice, just throwing that out there. Now since Demon Slayer takes place in 1920s Japan, this is also the Taisho era of Japan. What's really interesting about this era is that there were some Western influences that took place during this time period. So while the rice is cooking, let's get everything else ready. God. Now Tengen is a very thick boy. He actually weighs around 209 pounds, six foot six. You can see by the way he looks, he's very thick. So for breakfast, I'm actually having around 12 ounces worth of cod. Eight of it is going to be roasted and I actually have to remove any of these pin bones from this. And then we're gonna do an additional four ounces for our croquet. So this should be just around eight ounces. And then we also need an additional four ounces for the croquet. This is gonna be, be a lot of food. We're gonna cut this piece into two manageable pieces. And then this for our croquet is gonna be chopped up. We're gonna take this smaller loin and I'm just gonna dice this. We wanna make sure that this is kind of minced as well. Otherwise, you won't be able to form a patty for your croquet. Once your fish is minced, place it into your small bowl. Then we're gonna work with this real quick. For the croquet, we're gonna add some sliced green onion, one whole egg. This is just gonna help bind everything together. Crack of black pepper right on top. Pinch of salt. Gonna hit this with some breadcrumb as well. This is also gonna help bind everything. We're also gonna need some breadcrumb to fry this in too. Give this a quick mix. Make sure everything is together. And once everything is mixed, we're just gonna let this hang out in the fridge until we're ready to deep fry them. The next part of this breakfast is some pretty basic and really easy miso soup. We're going two cups of water, followed by just about, oh God, just about a half a tablespoon worth of dashi granules. You can just use regular dashi if you have it, but I find this stuff to just be a perfect substitute. Do a little, a little more, I like it strong. Now, obviously, if you want, you can make your own dashi and that's gonna be totally good, but I like using this because it tastes like 90% of the way there. Now, once this miso liquid starts coming up to that boil, this is when we're gonna turn it off and then take just a little over one full tablespoon of white miso paste. This is some really nice organic miso paste that I have, pop it into here. You don't want to really boiled miso. It's really, really gentle. I'm gonna mix this around just until all of that miso is nicely broken up. Also, with this recipe, you can adjust the flavors however you want. I like my miso soup a little stronger, so I added a little more dashi and a little more miso, but you can play with those. And we're gonna keep this on a very low heat, just to where it's just nice and warm. Make sure you throw a lid on it if you're making this ahead of time, otherwise it's just gonna evaporate and it's gonna be nothing. Our rice is going, our miso is ready. It is time to start roasting off that cod and get the oil ready to fry the croquets. Cod, again, is super simple. I'm gonna go onto my baking sheet right here, just the cod by itself, and then just salt. That's it, just a pinch of salt right on top. This is gonna go to my little toaster oven at 425 for about 15 to 20 minutes. Now while some of this food is cooking, we're gonna get in a quick Demon Slayer style morning routine in. And that just involves some really deep breaths because I'm terrible at it, and also some sword swinging. I actually have a whole workout plan from Jack's Blade we're gonna be using these for, so I have my work cut out for me today. But I'm also incredibly hungry, so we're gonna finish this thing. Now to finish this is super simple. We're gonna take our croquet batter, place it into some panko breadcrumbs, then place these right into our deep fryer. We're gonna fry these until they're nice and golden brown at like 325 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything hotter and you're gonna end up burning them with without cooking them. And once those two are done, let them drain on some paper towel and let's plate up. I got eight ounces of cod right here. I also have some suyu. This is just some dipping sauce that you can pick up. I, this is store-bought, it's fine. We're gonna put these beautiful croquets over on the corner right over here. Or I guess we'll do, we'll do fish, fish here. Croquets there. I wanted some more condiments. So this is some candied yam that I had picked up that, yep, I'm gonna eat that. A little bit of marinated daikon and some marinated gobo or burdock root. And then finally, the rice. I get just about 250 grams worth of rice with this entire meal. So this this is a pretty substantial meal. Look at all of this food. Am I missing anything? Oh, the miso soup. We ate, we've almost missed the miso. A <laughs> Little bit of miso soup on the side. That is a hefty amount of breakfast for anyone. Maybe not for Tengen, because he's thick. All right, I'm excited. Let's dive into this. I'm just gonna pick this up. Dip it in my suyu. Cheers. Oh yeah, look at that. You get the nice like cod flavor. The green onions really, really come through, which helps it a lot. Mm. Next is the baked cod. Dip this in my suyu as well. Mmm, that's nice. That's just some really nice baked cod. A little bit of pickles. And then miso soup. Oh, 
Here's all of the macros for this breakfast. It's pretty substantial. It's like 800 calories for everything. But if you want to be a demon slayer, I guess you got to go through eating all of this food. Oh, what was me? Let's eat all of this and get some training in. This took a while to take down and now it's time to train. So the demon slayers don't actually train with any kind of gym equipment. So today I'm going to be doing a little bit of training outdoors and I have a few things to help me out with that. I started off with a quick warm up and then I heard a kid say this. You talking to me? Yorokobe Shonen. Isn't that what you're supposed to say when these opportunities come up? After my warm up with the bag, I threw on a 40 pound vest and started doing all of my calisthenic work. This involved a bunch of pull ups, followed by a ton of push ups, followed by elevated lunges, and then something crazy happened. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just got some really crazy news, and I checked my phone when I probably shouldn't have while I was working out. We just got approved for an anime expo panel this year, 2022. Whew, I'm out of breath. It'll be at Friday morning at 11 15 a.m., super early. If you show up, I'll have snacks. Come and see me. I'm even going to have a very special print. Only for sale during Anime Expo Weekend, we should check out right here. Okay, let's finish this workout. That news got me so hyped, I decided to add in just a bit more training for today. I'm more or less done with this workout and it's gonna start raining relatively soon. There's just one thing that I wanna try and this is something that Tengen has done. I don't know if I can do it, but I'm gonna try. And that involved trying to do a butterfly kick. I haven't done one of these in probably seven or eight years and it took me so many attempts to try to land this thing. It still wasn't as graceful as I would have liked, but hopefully I made Tengen proud. So I grabbed myself my Kali sticks and I attempted it with these, which I've never done before. <laughs> Uh, let's go have some lunch. After all that training, we get to eat one pound worth of tempura shrimp, along with a bunch of other tempura stuff in this tempura don. So now for lunch, this is gonna be fun. This is actually a lot of food because I get to eat all of this shrimp. This is 16 ounces of shrimp. This is, this is a lot. The reason why we're doing shrimp is because we are making shrimp tempura bowls. Now there's a very, very small scene in the episode where Tengen is fighting Gyutaro and Tengen replies with this. I could devour a hundred bowls of tempura don. I don't know about you guys, but I don't think I can take down 100 bowls of this, so we're just gonna make one massive one. And for that, I'm also going to need some mushrooms. The mushrooms are going to be deep fried just like everything else, and I'm cutting the little slit on the top just to help them cook, followed by some nicely sliced carrots and some onion rings. With all of our vegetable prep ready, we just need to make our tempura batter. And this is one half cup worth of flour and about a quarter cup worth of cornstarch going right into that. I might need to make more because that's a lot of shrimp. For the liquid for the tempura batter, I'm actually using a nice crispy lager, but if you can't have lager or alcohol, feel free to just use some fizzy water. It just makes makes it nice and crispy. What uh, Chef Beto, the one-eyed tempura chef had taught me, this is kind of the consistency that I want. We didn't use all of this and it is the middle of the afternoon, but it's Tengen, you know? He's the god of festivals, so cheers. It's really good. Wow, I also have my coffee. I have our oil heating up over there. I'm gonna start dredging all of my shrimp. I do like to make sure I dredge my shrimp ahead of time just so that way everything is nicely coated before I start deep frying everything. It just makes the process a little more simple. This is just some plain old all-purpose flour. So I have my oil here. This is from earlier and I have it at 360 degrees, just a little hotter than I would want just because we're gonna put in a bunch right now. Let's fry up some shrimp, shall we? You better get to frying because this is gonna take a while. Ow. Oh God, on the tattoo. Oh no, that was not okay. It doesn't matter if it's not okay. We still have another like pound of shrimp to fry. Okay, well that was only like six pieces. So it's gonna take a minute. Oh, it's gonna take a lot longer than a few minutes, but after each batch, make sure you remove them and place them on some kind of a cooling rack and then throw this in the oven to stay warm. I'm having to do this all in batches just because it's so much, but I got some shrimp here and there's no way I'm not eating this right now. Oh my God. Batter, perfect. 2,000 years later. This is all of the tempura I have made for this meal. What is this? This is so much fried food and I really hope my stomach can handle it because this is what I put on the menu. This is what Tengen eats. 250 grams of rice. This is literally the rice. And onto that sad pile of rice, we start piling on all of that shrimp and piling it and piling it and piling it and piling it. This is so many calories. Ho oh, ho, don't forget the vegetables because that matters at this point. Bam, oh wait, we need garnish, green onions. This is gonna make such a difference. Oh, uh, why? Why do I do these things? For science, obviously. Like, look at this monster. It's gonna be a very heavy training session again. Oh God, this is so much food. I have a bunch of water. I'm gonna need it, because this is a lot of shrimp. I'm just gonna start going in. There's a little bit of suyu on the side, just like we had for breakfast. Mm, got that crunch. That is so good. When you make tempura batter, and you kind of have this nice, like, light, airy crust, it makes the world a difference. I wanna go for one of these, one of these onion rings because these look amazing. I feel like I should be using chopsticks. This is so much fried food. Mm. Oh yeah. We're gonna go for this shiitake mushroom as well. Perfect, perfect cook. A little carrot. 
I have to somehow get to all this race. So I'll get started. While I got started, Gandalf definitely felt left out and he wanted to join me in this monstrous eating session. Look, it's Gandalf. Hi, buddy. You can't have the shrimp, buddy. I'm sorry. It's been deep fried. Oh, look, rice. No Gandalf. And it has green onions on it? Uh-uh. My pores are gonna be just leaking grease after this. I've eaten this little pile of shrimp so far. I honestly feel a little, like a little sick from how much oil is on this, because this is so much shrimp. I'm gonna, I'm capped out. I feel like if I, oh God, I feel like if I eat anymore, we can't have dinner. So I'm gonna pack this up and I'm gonna give it to the neighbors. There's no way I can finish this. Oh my God, yeah, no. There's no way. That's so much fried food. I ended up having about half of my shrimp left over, which I did give to the neighbors. And she texted me the next day and said, thank you so much for the meal. And she ended up pairing it with a bunch of stuff she had around the house. Sharing food is something that Tangan has done with his waifu. So I figure it may as well do it with my neighbors as well. With lunch out of the way, I wanted to start prepping dinner, which is yakitori. But before yakitori, I wanted to get in my second Demon Slayer workout. And this workout is thanks to Jack's Blade. We're in the garage for this one because I think it's gonna be raining outside. And I really hope I don't hit the ceiling because we don't have a lot of room in here to do all of this Demon Slayer training. And Jack's Blade had me doing a lot of Demon Slayer training, starting with these sword swings. It's only 40. Yeah, well, we had to do 200 of all of this. Oh my God. Endurance training like this is no joke. And I highly recommend you don't do a full 200. If you're gonna try this, start off with like 50 or something first. And it wasn't just the sword swings. <laughs> We had to do jump squats. We had to do 100 jump squats. After the 100 jump squats, I had to do 100 burpees. Do you know how, I have, I have never done 100 burpees before and I felt like I was gonna die. This is me actually kind of dying right now. After the 100 burpees, I then had to do 100 push-ups. This is ridiculous. Go with the burpees, I could definitely feel shrimp kind of, you know, float to the surface. <laughs> it's not a good situation. Jax also says I need to do ladder sprints and I, what am I gonna do? No, we're gonna jump rope for like five or six minutes and then we're gonna make dinner. I really hope the jump rope doesn't push it over the edge. It definitely did feel like it started pushing it over the edge. Jump roping like this after that heavy meal was not a good idea. So much shrimp. It just, it just wanted to come up. I'm done. Let's go, let's go make dinner. I got a special one for you guys tonight. And that special one is gonna be this beautiful chicken yakitori. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I can't hold my excitement any longer for Anime Expo. I love meeting you guys at conventions and I wanted to offer something special to you. So this video is actually sponsored by me. I'm running an exclusive bundle available only at Anime Expo. This is going to include Annie Bites Volume 1, all of these beautiful pins, Annie Bites Volume 2, this Oni poster, as well as this exclusive convention only headband and an FFA badge. This entire bundle is available on my website website down below. These are only available for pickup at the convention. You can pick these up at the signing booth and if you pre-order one of these bundles, you will get access to the signing booth as part of that. I only have 10 bundles available for Friday and for Saturday. That means 20 people can pick these up and meet me at the signing booth and pick up one of these bundles. And not only that, but for those of you who pick up the bundle and get the signing are also getting an exclusive Polaroid selfie with me. I don't actually know how to use this yet, so we're just gonna cheek. So if you wanna support the channel directly and have a chance of getting one of these bundles and meeting me in person, make sure you check out the link down below at chefpk.com because there's only a limited amount of them. I can't wait to meet you guys at the show and for all the conventions going forward. Thank you guys so much for your support. Now back to the video. Two workouts, two meals, it is time for dinner. Even after all of that lunch, I'm actually, am kind of hungry after that workout. And today we are making chicken yakitori for dinner. And for that, I bought some really, really special charcoal. This is, is fun. Thun, I believe it is. This is a Japanese style charcoal that's really, really dense. What's really cool is that this charcoal burns really hot, but is very low smoke. So we actually get to eat indoors because it's a torrential downpour outside. What are you gonna do? Luckily, chicken yakitori is actually super simple to put together. We're gonna cut our chicken into nice little chunks. You don't want them too big. Otherwise, if they're too big, they're not gonna cook properly on the grill. So and this chicken should give us a ton of skewers. Now these chunks don't have to be perfect. Don't worry about that. You're just wanting to make sure that they're just not super, super big. Take all of your chunks of chicken, place it right back on your plate, and then we're gonna get ready to skewer these things. But before I actually start skewering them, I'm gonna make a quick sauce or a tare. This, I have like 100 mils or like a half a cup worth of water. Gonna go in with a nice hefty splash of mirin and then I'm actually gonna measure out about 50 mils worth of soy sauce and then finally just a pinch of sugar you can omit this if you don't want this any kind of sweet but I like the sweet saltiness here we're just gonna pop this on the stove and get it all nice and simmered while the sauce is working we can start skewering stuff now, earlier in the day I did end up soaking some bamboo skewers and I looking at it now I hope these are enough I did like 16 of them but I'm also gonna be doing just a few vegetables I have some leeks here that I cut as well I'm gonna stab myself I have a feeling it's been a 
long day. There we go. Okay, there we go. That way it looks like this. Make sense? Yeah? Well, one leek skewer. We gotta have some vegetables. I also have some leftover shiitakes that we did from earlier, so we're also gonna skewer these up. Oh no! Oh no! It is a JoJo reference. Mushrooms, leeks, everybody's happy. Now it's time for the chicken. Now for the chicken, we have our chicken pieces and some green onion. The green onion helps separate the proteins from each other. Otherwise, if you just do the chicken next to each other, then what ends up happening is it kind of congeals together when it cooks. So you do one piece of chicken, laying it flat like that. We're gonna take a couple of pieces and we're gonna put it in between each piece of chicken. Then you just repeat the process until we have every single chicken skewer done. Look at that. Look at that chunk of chicken meat. That looks amazing. Yeah, now if you can't have this, we have our giant plate of yakitori skewers ready to go. Now we have to start heating up the charcoal. And we ran into a problem already. I ordered a hibachi grill and it hasn't arrived. It was supposed to arrive today. So bucket chan to the rescue. Now with bucket in hand, I did have to start preheating this charcoal and this, this took a while. Okay, well the aluminum foil is melting. <laughs> Do I just have to hold this with tongs? Pro tip, using this small propane torch to try to light these charcoals actually doesn't really work unless you're willing to use like eight bottles. I feel like this isn't working. I think it stopped raining. Let's, let's try this. So instead I busted out the giant and blow torch to try to get these things lit and this still took forever but this was my best shot at getting these lit one eternity later i cannot explain to you how hot these three pieces of charcoal are is this even gonna fit how am i gonna get this chicken on here now i don't think my skewers are long enough uh i definitely don't recommend using a metal spatula to hold up your skewers that's kind of dumb okay that kind of works. It's hot. But I can't tell if it's cooking. Well, I'll see you guys in like 35 minutes. So we're out here in my front porch because uh, this did start smoking a little bit. I didn't feel like it was a good idea to do this in the house, but it's actually really, really nice outside. I'm just gonna finish grilling out here. So in true Tengen fashion, while I was cooking all of this, I poured myself a nice shot of sake and enjoyed it on my front porch because that's apparently what you do. Please don't mind my mismatched socks while I try to turn these skewers. What I found to be a mistake on my part is not using flat skewers for yakitori. Using flat skewers would have actually helped this not rotate at random and would have caused far less burns on my fingertips. Once the skewers were mostly cooked, after around six to eight minutes, I brushed them with some of our beautiful sauce that we had made earlier, downed another shot of sake while the neighbors drove by, and and this is what our yakitori skewers start to look like. They are amazing. These guys are just about done. I'm gonna pull these off so we can taste test them. Just these look so nice right now. Definitely not the most efficient way, but you have to admit, this looks so worth it. Before I dove into that first one, I threw the others right on the grill. I'm gonna dig into one of these right now because I am actually very hungry after sitting here for so long. Oh my God, that is so worth it. This thing is just incredibly tender. Like look at this chicken. I would be lying to you if I told you that I finished everything on the grill because honestly it, it, it's like 8 p.m. and it was getting a little late. So I grilled most of it and then brought it in and threw it in the oven. I apologize. I also have a giant bowl of rice for carbohydrates. All of the chicken, all the vegetables, this we have to eat all of it. I promised Rachel I would save her two skewers. You get two skewers. If you guys want the recipes for anything we've made today, they'll be down below in the description. Here are the macros and calories for those of you who care for dinner right over here. I'm gonna tackle so much of this right now. Oh my God, I love mushrooms so much. Um, oh, that's so good. Slightly sweet, slightly salty. A little bit of rice chaser. I've definitely had quite a bit of sake, as Tengen would. Today, I definitely felt like I put in the work, tried to become a demon slayer, except for that lunch. That was way too much. If you guys want to support the channel directly, check out the Patreon or the private Discord down below. I'd love to see you guys over there. Everything really does help out the channel. Let me know who you guys want to see next. I would love to have your input on that. My name is Chef PK, and remember, keep playing with your food.